Chapter Two of the Boy Scouts Down in Dixie. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. The Boy Scouts Down in Dixie by Herbert Carter chapter two among the puzzling swamp water trails alligator shrieked smithy and as this was the very first saurian he had ever set eyes on not in confinement this excitement was hardly to be wondered at look out giraffe he's after you cried bumpus from the other boat close by there was no need in spurring the lanky scout on to any further exertions for he had comprehended that the living log was a scary reptile even before he took that involuntary bath and the instant that his head came above the surface again he made frantic haste to clamber back into the boat Allen had instantly stooped and possessed himself of a repeating marlin rifle, which he kept handy at all times now, and had that gator attempted anything like hostile action, the chances were that he must speedily have made the acquaintance of a soft-nosed bullet that would probably have finished his earthly career in a hurry no doubt the denizen of the swamp was even more badly frightened than giraffe for after that one whirl and splash nobody ever saw him more but then how was a lanky scout to know that imagination peopled that dark waters with a myriad of twelve-foot gators all plunging toward the spot where he was struggling to drag himself back into the boat though his soaked garments seemed to weigh very nearly a whole ton look out giraffe or you'll upset us all shouted bob white who probably did not see any great reason for all this haste because conditions always color such things differently help me in somebody can you gasped the clinging boy want to see me bit in half do you thad you lend me a hand since these other fellows won't oh what was that as a great splash was heard but of course it was only bumpus playfully striking at the water with the flat of his paddle on pretense of shooing away the sportive and hungry alligator though no doubt he had also in mind the idea of hastening giraffes getting over the gunwale on wings of fear they managed to pull him aboard where he stood looking all around as though in the end a trifle disappointed not to see a few monsters showing their keen regret and being cheated out of a meal for that would have always added flavor to the story when he came to tell it guess he's gone down to the bottom suggested giraffe i kicked with all my might all the time i was in the water and that's the only way to scare a gator a coon told me but you can laugh all you've a mind to step hen and bumpus i reckon you'd a done as much as i did if it had been you fell in why i saw him open his jaws and i declare to goodness he had a mouth big enough to swallow a sugar barrel and that's the honest truth fellows i see plain enough that we're we'll due for some rattling lively times while we're down here in old louisiana remarked smithy but 
and if you don't mind, Thad, please paddle your craft a little more to the left, because the breeze is blowing straight from you to us, and, well, you know what I mean. Bumpus was feeling so hilarious over seeing that great splash taken by his persecutor, Giraffe, that he did not pay the slightest attention to what Smithy said. Do you know, fellows, the fat scout went on to remark, up to now it's been poor old Bumpus who's generally gone overboard or got in trouble like that, but seems as if times have changed, and now Giraffe, he wants to take his turn. If I had been close enough, and had a boat hook handy sure i'd have got it fast in the collar of your jacket giraffe and i'd have considered it a pleasure too that's right i reckon you would bumpus you're an awfully accommodating chum ain't you the tall scout sneered but see here whatever am i to do now thad sit in the sun and let your duds dry on you suggested one comrade the only trouble is we have to bail out the boat because he's nearly flooded us right now bob white asserted beginning to get busy with a big sponge had i ought to make a change thad demanded giraffe ignoring these side thrusts and appealing to the fountainhead just suit yourself replied the scoutmaster that's what i mean to do only this is my new suit and i kind of hate to put it up to dry for fear it'll shrink on me and i can't get out of it again the lanky one went on to say presently as the air under the trees was not so warm as if they had had more sunshine and giraffe commenced to shiver thad told him he'd better make the change you can wear your old suit right along if you have to he remarked and even if you have to throw away the other better do that than get a heavy cold from trying to let it dry on you that's all very well in hot august weather but there's a little tang in the air even way down south here along in december so strip to the skin and make yourself comfortable giraffe concluded that after all this was the best policy so he set to work paying little heed to the jests of his chums who like all boys could never let so good a chance to joke an unlucky companion pass by next time you see a log giraffe bumpus told him take a second look before you go to punch it with your paddle they say logs down here have got teeth and can take a big bite right out of an oar we don't want to lose any of our paddles and let me warn you that it's risky jumping overboard after one when you do drop it in the drink we'd hate to see you make a meal for a hungry gator though for that matter it'd be a pretty slim dinner he'd get well one thing's sure retorted the tall scout who was now fully dressed and feeling in readiness to do battle again i wouldn't blame any old gator if he declined to gobble you for a relish right now and that's what there you go again but on account of your recent trouble i'll let it pass a fellow that has just been nearly scared to death ain't responsible for half he says and the fat boy waved his hand toward the other as though he really meant it from the way you've been pestering us lately about that stuff you forgot to take home to your mother from the drug store 
i'd think you had troubles of your own to bother about retorted giraffe i never saw such a fellow to keep thinking of little things that don't amount to a row of beans why you admit it only cost five cents and yet to hear you let out a howl about it every little while you'd think it was worth a whole dollar it ain't that said bumpus with dignity but i'm so built that when anything gets on my nerves like that has i just can't sleep till i've solved the puzzle did i take that little package home and give it to my mother or did i leave it anywhere on the way that's the question i'd like to have solved and i mean it shall be if i have to write to three separate boys whose houses i stopped in on my way home to tell em what a glorious time i expected to have down here but you did write to your mother from memphis to ask her about it and when we got letters back at that last town you merely took a fit because there wasn't any for you davy jones went on to say taking a hand in the affair though he was as far away from bumpus in the other end of the boat as he could possibly get that's all very true replied the fat scout composedly and now i've got to just hold in and wait a long time till we get more mail it bothers me more than words can tell you a scout should never fail in his duty and my mother said she wondered what she wrote on that paper the worst kind what if it was only five cents i'm not thinking of the amount but the fulfilling of my duty thad always says that the main thing to consider faithful in little things is my motto hear hear cheered bob white from the other boat good boy bumpus them's our sentiments too declared step hen hilariously huh little things heh sniffed giraffe please get busy fellows and draw ahead of our friends in the other boat once more seems to me the air is better up ahead but make him beware of the logs mind you called bumpus as a parting shot they proceeded carefully along for some time the channel they were following seemed to be very winding and yet there could be no reasonable doubt but that it was constantly taking the expedition deeper into the great alligator swamp all the time thad tried to get all the information possible about the strange place he intended to visit but few people could assist him one man gladly allowed him to have a very rude chart that he said alligator smith who made a practice of hunting the denizens of the swamp for their skins had once drawn for him with a bit of charcoal and a piece of wrapping paper this was when the cracker had lost a heifer which he suspected had either strayed into the vastness of the swamp or else been killed and eaten by some hideout escaped convicts who found a refuge from pursuit within the almost impenetrable depths of the extensive morass there were things about this chart which none of them could fully grasp thad had some hopes of being fortunate enough to come upon the man who had drawn it as he was said to be somewhere about pursuing his queer vocation of acquiring a living from securing the skins of alligators he managed to shoot or trap 
and it was in this way that the eight chums had actually dared to stir into one of the least known places in the whole state of louisiana some of those with whom they had spoken about their intended trip had warned them not to attempt such a risky thing without a guide but thad was fairly wild to learn whether there could be any truth in the strange story that had come to his guardian in that letter and he just felt that he could not stand the suspense another day inquiry had developed the fact that inside of a few last months a man and a little girl had really been seen several times though nobody knew where he stayed and some said they had seen him paddling out of the swamp in a pirogue which had evidently been fashioned from the trunk of a big tree with considerable skill as the afternoon advanced and they found themselves getting deeper and deeper in the gloomy swamp the boys began to realize that this singular expedition might not turn out to be such a pleasant picnic after all there was always a peril hovering over them that must not be lightly treated and this was the danger of losing themselves in those winding channels for they had been told that more than once men had gone into alligator swamp never to be seen again by their fellows thad and allen had arranged a plan whereby they might mark their way and if it came to the worst they would stand a chance of returning over the same passages that they were following in entering the place they did this first by attaching a small white piece of cloth to a bush while still in sight of the last one that had been marked when these finally gave out they proceeded to break a branch and allow it to hang in a certain way that was bound to catch their eye and tell them how to paddle in order to keep passing along the chain this was a well-known method among woodsmen in these great swamps where one can be turned around so easily and all things look so much alike that even the best of experienced paddlers may make mistakes that are apt to cost dearly the boys fell quiet as the shadows lengthened to tell the truth all of them were growing a bit tired from this constant paddling and twisting their heads and trying to see so many sights at once and when giraffe hinted broadly that in his opinion he thought it might be high time they picked out some nice spot for stopping over so that the fire could be started and supper gotten under way nearly all the rest gave him a smile of encouragement just what i was thinking about myself said thad and unless i'm mistaken right now i glimpse the place we're looking for because you understand we ought to have a good high and dry spot for the camp do you know whether these here gators can climb that asked the fat scout a little nervously not a tree certain sure bumpus so you're safe if you only show enough speed in getting up among the branches but they just love to slide down banks they say and don't you go to depending on any such to keep your scaly friends from sharing your blanket davy remarked maliciously oh who's afraid not me sang out bumpus puffing out his chest as he spoke besides haven't i got a gun along with me this trip and some of you happen to know 
that i can use the same i've got a few crack shots to my credit ain't i thad before the scoutmaster could either affirm or deny this assertion giraffe gave a loud yell and was seen to be standing up in his boat pointing wildly ahead looky there would you boys he cried that's a cone in the boat seems like to me and he's paddling like everything to get away from us what say shall we give chase and see if four pairs of arms are better than one maybe now it's only a hideout darky scared nigh to death of thinking we're the soldiers come hunting after it and then again how do we know that it mightn't be felix himself because you remember they did say he was burnt as brown as mahogany whoo see him make that paddle fairly burn the air and ain't he flyin to beat the band though then why don't you give the word to chase after him when you can see we're all crazy to let out top notch speed End of chapter two